Hello all, it's such a pleasure to be joining you this evening talking about this wonderful film Softy, uh, directed by Sam Sokol. My name is Winery Kahio. I am a filmmaker out of uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and I will be moderating the session. And alongside us on this panel, we have not only the director Sam Sokol of the documentary Softy, but he's joined by the by his producer Tony Kamau, and we have also in our midst Don Edkins, who is a South African documentary filmmaker and producer, and has produced film projects that have been broadcast around the world, and is currently working on Generation Africa, with thirty films from sixteen countries across Africa, with the theme around the theme of migration. He's also the executive producer of AfriDocs, uh, the only free to view VOD platform and broadcast documentary film strand showing the best African films to audiences across the continent. And last but not least, Mira Naya, an Academy Award nominated director and best known for her visually dense films that pulsate with light. Her debut film, Salam Bombay, won the camera door, how do you say that? Oh. Her debut, yeah. Her debut feature, Salam Bay, won the camera door, followed by the groundbreaking Mississippi Masala, the Golden Globe and um, Emmy Award winning Hysterical Blindness in 2001, and the international hit Monsoon Wedding in 2001, which is one of my top 10 films of all time. <laughs> She's also the first woman to win the Venice Film, Festi Film Festival's coveted Golden Lion. She's a fiercely independent filmmaker who then made Vanity Fair the namesake, the reluctant fundamentalist and Queen of Katwe. An activist by nature, she founded Salam Balak's Trust for Street Children in 89 and the Maisha Film Lab in East Africa to train filmmakers on the continent. Welcome to everybody on the panel. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. Um, and first, I just wanna say how just excited I am to be speaking about this film. It's one of my favorite films of the year and not my favorite documentary films, but truly one of my favorite films coming out of the year. Um, and I've watched it a couple of times and every single time I've watched it, I've cried harder, the, <laughs> I've cried harder with every, with every screening. Um, just because for me, it, ans it, it begins to scratch at a question that I've always had about identity and belonging. But first I wanna open up this conversation to the rest of the panel um, and maybe ask um, Sam Sokol first and Tony, why you decided to make this film? Um, hey, this, is, this is like such an incredible um, honor and engagement, just being surrounded by, by people who've shown storytelling in the continent so much love and and i think that's probably the place where everything started because we we come from i remember um at the beginning even like when i started talking about the project with tony there was this line for i love my country but i'm afraid of my government and, mm. and it's it's something that just resonates more and more and in the beginning that was the idea it was like what what can can we do as filmmakers and storytellers and at the beginning um we just wanted to make a short video and use um boniface's softies protests as like a, a, a how-to guide like we just wanted to put them out on social media and be like you know this is how you can speak out this is what you can do this is how you can organize a protest but then it kind of kept developing and kind of seeing that there's so much more that people don't see at a protest, that people don't see um, at, you know, in, in newspapers or when people are just talking about the challenges and what they're going through. But at the same time, there's so many other layers that are historical that, are, that we face presently. And as that kept, you know, as you keep moving and talking about that, it keeps revealing more and more of why you're struggling with your government and why and what your part like what 
what the people's role is to play in all the mess that's going on. So that at the end of the day ended up becoming from that five minute thing that we wanted to do, ended up becoming a feature film. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, and um, I joined the project after most of this uh, principal photography had been done. Um, so that was towards the end of 2017. Um, Soko spent a whole year convincing me um, to join the project because in the beginning I was a bit worried that it would be a hagiography, um, praising uh, Boniface as an activist. He's an amazing person, but there had been a lot of stories told about him. But the more and more I saw the footage that Soko had, I was just blown away. Um, he had over 600 hours of footage, which I did not believe at first, but trust me, the 600 hours of so many different <laughs> things. He could, do, he could do a series, honestly. And what I loved about it was that it showed so many different dimensions of who he was um, outside of Boniface the activist, which had been on all of these multiple um, short videos that have been done about Boniface. I saw Boniface the man, you know, someone very, very vulnerable, someone with lots of fears. I saw Boniface the husband, you know, who was struggling, you know, to balance his, you know, duty to his family with his love for his country. And I saw Boniface the father who was, you know, who was, who wanted to be a great dad, but wasn't present. And I just thought it was also really amazing, like how much access that he had to Njeri, because um, I, I thought she was an absolute star. And we hadn't really seen that side of her publicly because she's a very private person. So I think just seeing the footage and the incredible access um, Soko had and the humility that he had thinking that he was going to make an activist manual in the beginning. Um, I just thought that this is such an incredible project and somehow um, needed to jump on board to make this a reality as producer. Gosh, and it was, um, you surely did that, both of you. It's just, I, I can't commend you enough. Um, I have a question for Don. Um, so when you watch this film, especially as a documentary film enthusiast, what stood out for you? What resonated with you about the film? Um, I mean, Wanari, for me, the first thing is that I've been waiting for a film like, like this for a long time. Mm. Um, you know, we have many films about political activists from Europe, North America, from Asia, but where are our films about political activists in Africa? Mm -hmm. And we've got the biggest uh, youth population of any continent in the world. And we have so many young people who are politically active, but we never get to hear about them. We never hear their voices. We don't see what they're doing. So to have this film come out was just really something that I thought was amazing. And I think it was, it's not just about the subject, but it's about the storytelling. Mm -hmm. and, and that for me, um, really has this film making its mark because it is not a linear film, right? It has so many different layers. It's got emotion, it's got drama, it's got closeness, it's got intimacy. At the same time, it's public. And we see the involvement of Boniface as a character. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, this is just something that I think primarily has got to get out to African audiences. You know, I know it's a universal film, it's got a universal theme, it's got universal appeal, it's a global story, but uh, across Africa, we've got to make sure that people across the continent get to watch this film. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Mira, can I ask, um, because your your work has, has tinges of activism in it. Only tinges? Do, well, more than, I'd say more than, but sometimes I just think that you I think that the human is political, <laughs> as, as, and you and you create stories about political humans. <laughs> but my but my question is more: um, How do you see the relevance of a film like Softy in 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 today um, in in the in this time and place that we're living, especially just coming, having just finished with the the U.S. and and elections as, as the world observed? You know, um, when I, the reason that, I, just briefly to say, the reason uh, myself and a group of us founded Maisha, what was 16 years ago in East Africa, in Kampala, Kenya, Uganda, uh, Tanzania and so on, was to make a softie. <laughs> 
<laughs> was to make a rafiki, was to make uh, our own voices, but, but made with cinematic excellence without apologies, uh, keeping abreast of the world cinematically and technologically and so on, but really um, not being afraid uh, if more than that, uh, actually celebrating the the complexity and the diversity and the fun and the humor and the and the despair in us all in in our places, mm -hmm. you know. And what and now I can say, having lived, uh, my main home is Kampala, Uganda, for more than thirty years, and having made two feature films there, having really made, um, you know, knowing and cre hopefully helping to create a local voice in cinematic form, you know, and that um, th this, this was really when I saw Softy, it, it, um, it had, I, for me, I had similar excitement in seeing it as I did with Battle of Algiers, which is the only film that I wish I had directed and I haven't directed, you know, like, like that's the kind of love and, and honor that I, I use, uh, I, I think of for Battle of Algiers, because I like, I, I guess like Sam, I don't know, uh, come from documentary, hardcore documentary, what we call cinema verite, you know, the cinema mm -hmm. of truth. In the old days, when I learned that form with Ricky Leacock, who pretty much invented, they said, the mobile camera and Penny Baker and those guys, it was to observe, it was to capture life. And and like you said earlier, it's not that I make, I make political films, but more than that, it's make, making films politically, you know? And mm -hmm. that's what I saw in Softy, um, very much this seemingly freewheeling amalgam of uh, newsreel of history of how we became what we became, as Sam said earlier when we began. How did this happen? And, and we have to remind ourselves because so often in today's world, we are seeing it happen again and again mm -hmm. and again. And um, I, I, um, what I loved also about Softy is that you're not afraid, Sam and, and the team, to show who we are in all our languages, five languages, like my husband speaks Swahili very well. And he was here, we were watching. And he said, oh, that's not Swahili, that's Kikuyu, this, that. You know, we were just trying to form all the different you know, languages uh, in in softy, just just because we are from there in some ways, and 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 I love that that you were not afraid of showing us for who we are in our languages, in our in all of it, you know, uh, because that's actually, in my opinion, in my experience, that's what actually makes it universal, you know, actually makes it universal, and more and more and sweeter for it being from the African continent, of course, because. Uh, we never see that layered, you know, half finished ideas. Sometimes mm -hmm. we never see ourselves as we form ourselves in, in a funny way, if I can, if that makes sense. Um, so that's the excitement I felt. I wondered, I want to know actually, Sam, I want to know whether you start, what, what did you look at in the documentary world? You know, uh, uh, what, what was inspiring in cin in cinema as well. Did you see Battle of Algiers? Did you see films like that? Did you did you try to? Uh, I, I would love to know the cinematic beginnings as well as the political ones. But yeah, but congratulations um, and thank you no, for thank it. You. Thank you. Um, um, I I remember watching this film called Nostalgia for the Light. Um, I can't I can't remember the name. I know the filmmaker is Chile is Chilean, uh -huh. and it, it it spoke to how like this women who were trying to find peace with the loss of their relatives during the Pinochet regime uh -huh. at this in the I think it's the Atacama Desert or something, um, which is the world's best place to stargaze. Uh -huh. So like a big um, observatory built. And uh -huh. it's kind of maybe we could find our answers with by looking at the stars. Uh -huh. But at the same time we have to look at what's and the ground beneath and just seeing and experiencing that kind of storytelling it it kind of allows you to realize that we can reflect on our existences without being disrespectful mm. like and i think in the african in most african languages our, our the way we speak 
has a kind of semblance of respect which allowed people to engage with each other and and that for me was like if i can do this within a film and people can watch it and be like oh crap that's that's me but i don't want to stop the director and i've been like and at the same time even the people in the film can watch it like you know boniface and jerry can still watch the film and learn new things about themselves and that that became like this this thing and and kind of like a hope i have cinematically of telling stories and engaging with stories that do speak to very difficult and complex subjects but in ways in which a lot more people who might never have engaged with them before are able to Mhm. Well, yeah. Go, go ahead, Mira. No, I was wondering if there were other cinema uh, other there's, 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 there's a couple. Just a few if you have. Um there's a couple of films. Right now I think because of my head is like If I leave off off the Toko Yeah, there was Street Fight. Remember Soko? Street Fight. I remember that one. Yeah. Cory Booker's run for mm. for Mayor of Newark. Um mm. that was interesting like into that, that was incredible just seeing how bad politics is and kind of be like oh we're not alone. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Um there's there's another um I'm trying to think there's another film uh it's a, it's a Chin- it's it's not a Chinese film but it's made in China Last Train Home. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, again it's kind of just speaks to how Verite is is so immersive but at the same time so revealing um which um something that don said it's it's something we we have to encourage and embrace in the continent because again our audiences are not used to that kind of storytelling because of the kind of films that are being shown to them and and it I'll just kind of embracing that and being like oh we can do this and tell our own stories in our own way um mm. that that's and a lot a, a lot of work by Usman Zembene mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. from black girl um to hala like there's yeah there's a lot <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you so thank Manuri, you i've got a question for soko go ahead <laughs> soko i remember you came and pitched the project at the durban film mart I can't remember quite which year it was. And uh and we were talking about it and you were showing some of the material and explaining what was going on. And at that point I don't think um you'd got and Jerry to say that she would be part of the film. How how did that come about because I think what makes Softy so powerful as a film is having in Jerry because it brings the personal with the with the politics you know you get the the family you get the the tension that comes out of doing the kind of work that Boniface does and 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 Jerry is is hard she's not softy hey she's she's hard mm-hmm. and when did you get that um that kind of agreement or that buy in from her so it's it's interesting cuz at the time um So the time I pitched at Devon in 2017 but Don you and I started talking in 2016 and okay. in 2016 it was when so before when I started filming a lot of the work that was happening is you know we started with filming Boniface and everything was happening so the only time Jerry would allow us to film at home cuz she's like super private she's like you're not filming the kids you're not filming me so the only time we could film them was when they were preparing for protest so like at the beginning of the film when when they were you know at the backyard doing everything and then she'd pop out that's like the only time you get any access with her but in 2016 um especially after that scene when Boniface says I'm going to run and she was like what do you mean we okay. it kind of just tipped the scales in different ways because we found a kind of sense of camaraderie of like even me I didn't know and she was like <laughs> you know so how so we kind of at from that point i i started talking to her I was like i feel it's important to get your side of the story because mm-hmm. people need to see what you go through. because when he makes this decisions you live the consequences mm-hmm. the rest of us just watch it and mm-hmm. 
I, I said, like, can we do like a 20 minute interview and just, you know, just you let me know what your feelings are and everything. And I'm, I'm good. I'll go. We ended up talking for like four or five hours. And she just, she, she, she kind of, at that point, she was like, I see why this is important because I feel like I'm not alone. Like we're probably the other women out there who go through the same thing, but our default setting is not to talk about it. And once because I had been with them for a while. So like the kids, I was literally like part of the furniture. So like the kids were not afraid to talk to me. So when whenever they would want to say something or whenever I'd, film, I'd be filming them, they would just engage and do what they were doing. But at the same time, the kids were growing up. So I was like this, I was at this uncle whom they could talk to when they couldn't talk to their parents. Mm -hmm. So like someone like Nate, um, I'm like the, the the old dude that he can talk to. So <laughs> and 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 when 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 they went for, to exile and I went to to film them, I could see the toll of what was going mm. on and when I was talking to him, he could talk to me. And and that that kind of I think especially now when the film kind of came together, especially for the parents that kind of just took them back and they were like oh my god this is this is what's happening to our kids or this is what's going on with our kids and and it kind of um i think funjeri and she says this quite a bit she was like she feels very happy that she allowed us into their space wow. because there are things she would never have found out mm. Mm. Oh. And Jerry is quite an activist herself because um, I've seen her at protests and there's not one time where you kind of see her being arrested um, and you see her standing up to the police in that image. And also the people who, who have been around them as a couple know their strength and know that Jerry doesn't back down. <laughs> she's, uh, she's as yeah. much a fighter as, as Bonnie is, right? Um, mm -hmm. And they're both like, sorry, mm -hmm. no, I was going to say oh, yeah. there's, there's something interesting um, with, with the film. And I think we've, we kind of had, it, it's kind of just come out in tr really interestingly is all these people whom the heroes in life stand on their shoulders on. And it, it kind of becomes again important for us, especially from an African context where we really praise that leader, that person at the top. We really hold them in high esteem. And I think it's important to kind of deconstruct that and be like, they, these guys are heroes, but they're also greater heroes behind them, who these people's, whose shoulders these people stand on, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's also interesting that these people, sorry, Wanuri, we'll uh, go back to your question, but I think it's also very amazing that that, that Boniface, life has been defined by powerful women around him. You know, his mother, you know, is the one who set him on the course of activism um, um, with the kind of life that she she led. Um, and then also there's Jerry, you know, who has been such a strong support system and an activist in her own right. And then this Hadija, who's just one of the most amazing characters who just jumps off the screen, the, the campaign manager who's not afraid to say whatever she wanted to say. So I, I think that was just one thing about this film that's so special, just, just in terms of just how it just shows these amazing women who are, who are just, you know, you wanna grow up and be them in one way or another, which is I think something that audiences have connected with even in Sundance, when we showed it there, even back home in Kenya. I think that's the thing that a lot of people keep on talking about as well. Yeah, and, and I think my question was more, why is it that you didn't show her more of an activist? Mm. Oh, and Jerry? Yeah. Ha. Ah. <laughs> it, it, it's, so honestly, we had, we had a couple of cuts <laughs> of the film. <laughs> And, and we had this cut where she, she, we indeed, we kind of revealed a bit more of her, like with the street and how she speaks and how, like how she engages with the part of like her activism in a sense. However, I, I kind of felt that 
Jerry's greatest strength is in how amazingly intelligent she is in driving, ev- like in, in kind of engaging and driving everything around her without necessarily being carrying a placard. And, and it kind of became important to utilize that part to encourage audiences or people in the audience who feel they can't go out to the street, but they can do something and they can engage in a certain way and not feel like they're not supporting a cause or being part of a cause. And, and in just kind of finding that balance, eventually just felt like probably this would be the best way to utilize her strength and what she can do. I saw it like that too. I saw the foundation. I saw her as the anchor in the family. Exactly. And, and and the absentee parent and the all parent uh, mm. and, and that I saw as and her articulation was just extraordinary uh, from beginning to end you know how mm. she spoke without a single wasted word and often the words were very uh, just they just hit to the point you know they just were astute mm. like and uh, that for me was pure activism you know, the, her whole persona and what she did there. Oh. I, I've just made a, a six hour a series called A Suitable Boy about post India independence, like three years later, the first in democratic election the country is preparing for. It's fiction, it's Vikram Seth's novel, but there was an unspoken figure of the wife of the minister of, you know, oh. of the, the, again, another Jerry, you know, but a, but a traditional form of a, you know, and, and those kinds of women, they look, they're overlooked most of the time, but in mm. truly in political families, because the man or the woman, one of them is always away. Uh, it's the other that raises the family and that keeps yeah. them strong. And that's how I, I, I think they are the real heroes in, in so yeah, many, yeah. Ways, you know, yeah. and, and you really captured that. And she is that, you know, she is that. Um, yeah, I was, I loved that. And I never confused it for her not being activist actually. For me, she was the ultimate activist. Um, yeah. Those Kenyan women, man. Woo! <laughs> Something else. <I> mean, <laughs> the best. Uh, they're amazing. <laughs> Never uh, say die. <laughs> right now, we are, we are um, I know like a lot of people I'm talking about like the, the kind of like documentaries and the storytelling that's coming out of Africa and East Africa. And we have trailblazers like Wanuri who who just keep just, you know, because sometimes you feel like you can't do this because you're like, who would care about a story we're telling? And why would we tell it the way we want to tell it? And, you know, you watch films like, like Rafiki and you're like, we can do that's this. That's why, yeah. Exactly. And, and that kind of just energizes us to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that it can be such a lonely sport, this film mm. activism business. Um, and I just wanted to ask Don, um, what are you seeing from, from your standpoint as a somebody who's been like recording and watching the films that are coming out of the continent? What are the new things that you're seeing coming out of East Africa? Or what is your excitement about East African film at the moment? I think it's maturing. Mm. You know, I I see the growth is not just in in quantity, but it's in quality. And Mm. I feel that there's a maturity in storytelling that's coming out, which is really powerful and so welcome. You know, if you think back in time um, where the the start of of factual uh, filmmaking was around TV, you know, all of a sudden now we're getting beyond TV. We're getting into cinema, Mm. finally. And, and I think it's the cinema approach to storytelling that is making its mark. I mean, if you think of the letter by, um, by Maya and Chris, um, it's, it's, it's the kind of stories that are coming out, you know? Mm-hmm. For too often we've had filmmakers coming from other parts of the world, coming to Africa and making films in Africa with African stories, but they don't have that understanding of the culture. They don't have the access to the stories that African filmmakers have. 
And so I'm really encouraged by seeing the, these kind of films, you know, and Softy is an excellent example of that. So I, I really, I really feel it's the maturing, but also oh. when we, it's about the collaboration that's happening, oh. you know, um, if I think about Maisha Film Lab, I think about DocuBox, you know, East Africa Fund, um, where we have initiatives which are there to support filmmakers as filmmakers and help them grow their stories and turn them into films that will reach audiences. I think this collaboration is extremely important because it's, it's also creating a community. You know, for too long, filmmakers have worked in isolation, but it's a community that offers strength. It's a community that gives support. It's a community who also welcome the films. And so that collaboration community, I think is growing. And that's what I see these films as being the product of. Great. Yeah. Mira, and as somebody who started Maisha, what are your hopes for um, our, our region of the world when it comes to cinema and when it comes to film? Um, you know, uh, for me, both as a kid growing up in India and then coming to the West when I was 18, 19, and seeing so little of my own country and culture on, on our screens anywhere. And when we did, the levels of quality of them were so abysmal that you kind of hid your head. Uh, and I vowed then, you know, that even in my films, even in Salam Bombay, my first films, if I don't have anything, I will blow it on the screen. I will oh. put it on the screen and the rest can look after itself. So that was my goal for Maisha is two things. One is to create a real voice of, of filmmakers for as filmmakers, not as NGO makers and not as video this and that, not as being the band-aids of the okay. others who come from the outside and say, okay, we want these images to support mm -hmm. this fact that we have about your country, which is really the bread and butter of so many filmmakers that I have known you know, in these years. But to restore it back to actually the training, which Don's speaking about the creative community, to find a creative community that you can brainstorm with that you can create with but also in for me because of that early apologistic stance to never apologize for craft oh. and for excellence and for thinking and for narrative so our stress was really how to write initially how to write you know for for the screen in fiction and then in, in pure documentary not so much how to write in that but how to conceive and how to create so those were the two prongs of documentary film and feature film writing and feature filmmaking uh, that was my show for about 16 years now my initial goal was let's just create five great directors in the east african region mm -hmm. Uh, the, at last count at 10 years ago when I was trying to get government help to help us because it was entirely free school and no support from the governments of any of our four countries. Uh, when I was trying for that, we took a band of directors who had now come out of uh, Maisha. They were, uh, they were 11 to boot just in Uganda alone and 28 in all. This is already 12, 15 years ago. And and we had so many, we had 28 directors who were, who were doing all sorts of things. I mean, everything that was on Ugandan TV was created with a lot with Maisha alumni. And again, hostel series that were about who we are. So my prompt was just, was actually just that, is teach us the craft, make us know the bridges, make us have a community, give us, not give us, but let us make our community. Oh. And then we will find, and then the stories will are abounding from the first session in Maisha in 2005. I can't tell you the stories, the, the screenplays. I still think of some of, some of them, you know, uh, and, and also the hilarity, the humor oh. that I live with at home, because it is, it is almost the only way to live <laughs> because life is so, so hard and so, you know, so unbelievable that it's like the Cubans, it's like the Punjabis in India, you know, it, we, are, we, we have to laugh at tragedy, otherwise we'll die, you know, and that is what we all have in Kenya, though it is taken to a point of extraordinariness, I love it. So this is what I'm hearing, you know, in Softy, in your film, in, in, in the vocabulary of what I see now, and it's very exciting to me because it takes that long, actually, to, to be able to stand up and say, this is who I am. And on any level, I will compare. 
you know that was the goal of maisha i really think now we have almost done it you know and uh, now it's for all of us and you and the people who come out of it and who can keep finding and sourcing each other to just continue that because the act of making film um as i've always said is a fantastic disease and and you have to prove you're sick and if you're sick then you have to continue continue being sick <laughs> until we you know to survive the to 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 sort of take that and and make something of of our world you know that's my hope now i really i hope more that we create channels of distribution uh one you that that are very that are more not i was going to say legitimate but that are that are graspable you know that are some things that we can feed in our work to and know that it will see the light of day without without us doing it each time like we have done you know uh in the early days with selling cds now i don't even know what the distribution channels really are that are open to us and i look forward to that organization yeah i mean i think, I think that because that's a really important um mm. conversation um especially when it comes to films like softy and and also mm. some of what i came across when after trying to release rafiki is that yeah. a lot of african broadcasters would say we don't want this film because it will upset african yeah. governments or it will upset yeah um, and 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 it's it's a curious thing when distribution seems to be aimed at appeasing <laughs> a very small social class of people well, yeah when it can benefit so many more people you know yeah um and i think that 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 in itself becomes its own sort of censorship exactly. and its own and its and its own uh, sort of um gagging yes but what has been the film what has how has a film been received in kenya so, um yeah really, oh yeah Yeah, Tony go. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great I think it's so interesting that you're talking about distribution because um our experience of releasing soft tea um in Kenya and currently in different parts of Africa um has been a steep learning curve. I think even steeper than producing the film to be honest. Um yeah, because I think um they I mean there there were some barriers which we did overcome. Uh one was you know first of all like when it comes to distribution theatrical distribution uh we had to convince the theatrical distributors that softy was cinema you know that was just the initial barrier like speaking to distributors whether it's broadcasters etc and telling them this is a this is this is like a narrative film this is entertainment we are not sponsored by an ngo to talk about democracy or anything like that that has its merits but this is a, this is entertainment so that was the first barrier just convincing theatrical distributors but we got this amazing distributor who took the film on and we did we decided to do more than one cinema and the reaction to the film and the marketing which was crafted by the internal softy team i mean the reaction on the ground was absolutely amazing because i think a lot of people were going because they were friends <laughs> but when they went there and they saw the film they're like oh my god this is cinema so i think that i think and then the fact that we had like a really good um theatrical release and great responses um meant that now broadcasters were coming to us and asking oh when can we show this film so we're still in discussions with them and right now we're self distributing oh. um yeah on different um digital platforms um in Kenya in East Africa we just had a screening in Nigeria because what we're saying right now is okay if it's not there then we'll build it we need to just find our ways to start building these things yeah. No, for sure. Like we have to, because the, the who's the film for? Like who's this this story yeah. told for? And if they can't watch it, why do we make the story in the first place? So that that kind of just keeps pushing us to be like, okay, um, what solutions are there? How can we work with them? So we 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 are just we are testing out like um, distributing it digitally on different platforms, um, paid platforms, um, to see if. just to see how the response is and see how much engagement we can get and so far it's been been really good and we we want to keep pushing it and still see how far we can go but then eventually we do want to release it 
for free and just have it engage and work with it for impact in different spaces. Um, and we are working on an impact plan for that. So it's like, it, I think we always get shocked whenever someone writes, like there's someone who sent us like a 20 page um, <laughs> essay on the film and we're like, oh my God. And that, that, when you read that, that kind of throws you in a whole other space and that it's been incredible. Yeah, and for, and so I forgot to add, we were number one. We've been number one in the theaters in Kenya. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we beat like Hollywood films. Yeah, like we, we, the, the distributor wanted to put us on for only two weeks. We ended up being there for like seven weeks, and we were, and even at the seventh week, it was like because we were going digital, we were like you know, and then because the COVID cases always started going up, so we kind of like had to adapt with everything, and it's been it's been that that kind of year and of course like mira what you're saying and and what wanuri was saying oh. is how you kind of do face this double um censorship of sorts because we that's with the film being rated over 18 and for a reason we totally don't understand but of course it is censorship but at the same time talking to a dist distributor who says you know we don't think um, we don't want to mess rock the boat so you uh -huh. you kind of have to to go with the flow and just keep going well I, I just want to thank everybody for just coming together to discuss this wonderful film really i just think that it's not only is it pertinent pertinent now to kenya but to the world that we live in because we've seen what chaos politics can cause not only in um, the global south, but all over the world, um, in, in people who believe that their democracies are working democracies. Um, so it's, it's, I think that this is not only a call to action, I think that it's, it's an important film to be watching if, if you're ever questioning the idea of being an activist in any shape or form. Um, and and I, I, I can't say enough how excited I am not only for this film, but for your career, Sam and, and Tony, uh, moving forward, because your, 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 your courage and, and your ability to tell this film, being here, knowing it, watching it, the fact that you, you, you told this film or you made this film in the face of such political adversity and an and, and, and unknown backlash, which may or may not happen, speaks volumes about your character and speaks volume about um, your just your steadfastness in this in this um, in, in, in this in this space in this artistic I cannot space. agree more I cannot agree more really Wanuri. it's a you're a shot in the arm dear Sam Soko and Tony <laughs> and Softy and all you know and and to what will come after this as well you know inshallah and we're really thankful to to all the support you guys have have given and continue to give to filmmakers um, in Africa. And we, you know, we just need to keep the fire burning and we need to keep the things going. And yeah, so it's incredible. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. This was Namaste. great. <laughs> this is amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> this run great. Bye, Don. Bye, Manuri. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Sam.